In the last video, we talked about the assumptions we make about the consumer's preferences. We also talked about what consumer utility is and what marginal utility is. In this video, I want to introduce the indifference map and indifference curves. But before that, I want to go back to our example utility function. u as a function of x sub 1 and x sub 2 is equal to x sub 1 raised to a, x sub 2 raised to b. And just to simplify things, I want to set a value for a and b. I'll assign them both a value of 0 0.5. So 0 0.5 and b is also equal to 0 0.5. So now our new utility function, which is a function of x sub 1 and x sub 2, this is our new utility function, would now be equal to x sub 1 raised to 0 0.5, x sub 2 also raised to 0 0.5. Let's say we set the utility level of the consumer to 5. What are the possible combinations of x sub 1 and x sub 2 that could achieve this exact level of utility? The answer, countless. Let me write that down. u is equal to 5 is equal to x sub 1 raised to 0 0.5, x sub 2 raised to 0 0.5. There are countless combinations. And what we can observe as we look at these combinations is that x sub 2 has to decrease as x sub 1 increases in order for the level of utility to stay the same. And the reverse is also true. And so when we graph this, it looks something like this. Let me just draw the y-axis and the x-axis. And they will this guy here as x sub 1 and this guy here as x sub 2. And so the graph of this would look something like this. And this is your indifference curve. And this is the level of utility when u is equal to 5. This curve is what we call the indifference curve or the iso-utility curve. All the points on this curve gives exactly the same utility level to the consumer. And in our case, this is 5. So we'll label this u naught u with a zero on the bottom so that's called not so u not and so when u when u is equal to u not which is equal to 5 the utility level is this white graph or white curve that we have over here say the consumer consumes 5 units of good 1 and 5 units of good 2 let's call this bundle a so bundle a let me just scroll down so Bundle A, bundle A consists of 5, good 1, and 5 of good 2. And so the utility derived from bundle A is actually equal to 5, 0 0.5, and 5, 0 0.5. I just plugged in the values these two values of 5, uh, uh, these two values of x sub 1 and x sub 2, and plug them in our utility function. And so we've got utility gained from bundle A is equal to 5 raised to 0.5 times 5 raised to 0.5. And this is actually equal to 5. And so what we know is that bundle A lies along this white curve we have here. So let's just say this lies here, and this is bundle A which I'll label point A. So here, we have, let me change my color, we have 5 units of good 1 and 5 units of good 2 as well. If we increased consumption of good 1 from 5 to 6 without decreasing the consumption of good 2, the consumer would have greater utility. And we can see this mathematically because 6 raised to 1 half times 5 raised to 1 half isn't equal to 5. And 6 raised to 1 half is also greater than 5 raised to 1 half. Therefore, the consumer gets more utility. Graphically, point B will be 1 unit to the right of point A since x1 is increased by 1 unit. And x2 does not change. So graphically, point B is 1 unit to the right of point A. So here, this is 6. And so point B, I'll choose another color. Let's use teal. So point B will be here. And so what we can see is point B does not lie on U0. Point B does not lie on the utility level where U is equal to 5. Point B actually lies on a higher utility level. And if we graph that, 
we'll get a new utility level, which is kind of like this on a new utility level. And we can call this U sub 1 or U1 in short. And so what we can see is that when the consumer increased his consumption from 5 units of good 1 to 6 units of good 1, without changing his consumption of good 2, he increases his utility from U0 to U1. Now there are a few things I want to emphasize regarding utility, specifically indifference curves. The first is that any point on the same indifference curve is downward sloping. Mathematically, this means that the change in x sub 2 with respect to x sub 1, so a change in x sub 2, a change in x sub 2 with respect to x sub 1 should always be negative. Should be should always be negative along the same indifference curve. We can actually prove this mathematically by taking the total differential of our utility function. So our utility function is actually a function of x sub 1 and x sub 2. So taking the total differential of this utility function, we'll actually find du is equal to the partial of u with respect to x sub 1, d x sub 1, plus d partial u, partial, let me fix that up, partial u, with respect to x sub 2, d, x sub 2. And what we know is we set ourselves on the same indifference curve, which means that our utility level does not change. Therefore, du would be equal to 0. Would be equal to 0. And what we also know is partial of u with respect to x sub 1 is your mu1. Is your mu1 and partial of u with respect to x sub 2 is just equal to your mu2. And so our total differential of our utility function on the same indifference curve would now be equal to 0 is equal to mu1 dx1 plus mu2 mu2 dx2. And so if we equate this, we'll actually find that mu1 over mu2 is equal to, I forgot to put the 1 there, is equal to the negative of dx2 of dx2 over dx1. And what we find is we went a full circle to this guy here. We know that mu1 and mu2 can't be negative, so it must be that mu1 over mu2 is a positive number, and so dx2 over dx1 is a negative number. And that proves the slope at any point on the same indifference curve is negative. And this negative slope that we found here is actually what we call our marginal rate of substitution. Our marginal, marginal rate of substitution substitution, which in short is written as MRS for 1, 2. MRS 1, 2. This is also the willingness of the consumer to give up good 2 for good 1. And so that's the first thing that I want to emphasize. The second thing I want to emphasize is that the marginal rate of substitution becomes less negative as you move along the same indifference curve. Like take our example over here. On this graph, here, if we drew a straight line that was tangent to the indifference curve, this line here is actually infinitely negative. If we drew a line tangent to point A, or so it seems, this is less negative than the first line, and we draw another line here, this is even less negative, until we reach a slope of very, very, very close to zero, or virtually zero. So the slope from being negative infinity becomes less and less negative until you reach a slope of zero. And so the marginal rate of substitution actually becomes less and less negative as you move along the same indifference curve. Mathematically, what this means, I'll scroll to the right. Mathematically, what this means is our MRS, if we take the change in MRS, with respect to x sub 1, 
This should be positive as we move along the same indifference curve. What this also implies is that x sub 1, or the quantity of a good one consumed, has to increase by an increasing amount as the consumer consumes less of good 2 for the consumer to stay on the same utility level. The same goes for good 2, or x sub 2. This phenomenon is called the law of diminishing marginal rate of substitution. And the law of diminishing marginal rate of substitution actually relies on the assumption of non-satiation, the one we talked about in the last video, and the strict convexity of the consumer's preference, the one I stated on number two as my emphasis. So it would be important that the consumer's preferences fall under the two assumptions first before we say that the law of diminishing marginal rate of substitution actually applies to the consumer's preferences. To check for non-satiation, as we discussed in the last video, marginal utility has to be positive for all goods. To check for the convexity of preferences, we can do this by checking the quasi-concavity of the utility function since the preferences will be strictly convex when the utility level is quasi-concave. And you can check this by seeing if this equation is true. 2 uh, f12 f1 f2 minus f11 f2 squared minus f22 f1 squared is greater than 0 for all x sub 1 and x sub 2 greater than 0 where f12 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 is equal to your function uh, let's say your utility function your utility function uh, take the partial derivative of your utility function with respect to uh, x1 or x2 then you take this guys where f sub 1 f1 is equal to the partial derivative of our function with respect to x1 in our case it's u so it's actually partial u with respect to x sub 1 f sub 2 would be equal to the partial derivative of u with respect to x sub 2 and I think you get where we're going. F11 would be the partial derivative of u times 2 with respect to x sub 1. So you take the partial derivative with respect to x sub 1 two times. And f sub 2, 2 would be the same thing except for x sub 2. And f 1, 2 is also equal to f21 is equal to um, basically the partial of u with respect to x1 and x2. There we go. So once you find all of these f sub 1, f sub 2, etc, etc, you can actually see if your preferences, if the consumer's preferences is strictly convex. And if it is, and it satisfies non satiation also, then you could say that the consumer's preferences follow the law of diminishing mar marginal rate of substitution. For those asking, I'll upload the proof of the convexity of preferences in a separate video.